Your graphics card is the engine that powers what you can do, or how lustily you may brag, if you're a PC gamer or a content creationist who lives and dies by the speed of your graphics accelerated software. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the greatest and worst GPUs available right now. Stay closely to the finish of this video because by the time we're done, you'll know exactly which GPU to choose and which to avoid. But let's start with the worst GPUs on the market right now, the NVIDIA Titan. NVIDIA has two Titans on the market right now, the GTX Titan X and the Pascal Titan X. We're only going to be discussing the Pascal version here, and to begin with, something labeled Titan? It doesn't necessarily imply high performance. You'll get 12 gigabytes of DDR5 VRAM with this graphics card, which most users believe will make it powerful with any task. And in fact, while the graphics card will allow you to play games at 1440p resolution, thanks to its base clock speed of 1417 megahertz and a boost clock speed of 1000 531 MHz, 384 bits of memory bus, and 480 gigabits of bandwidth, it's kind of a no-brainer why you wouldn't be whipping out that credit card and heading to Newegg or Amazon right now to purchase this puppy. Truth be told though, the price tag for the NVIDIA Titan X isn't exactly reasonable, especially right now in 2022. In fact, you can acquire a graphics card that is far more powerful in gaming and comes with premium features like ray tracing and DLSS 2.0 for under the insane price tag of the Titan X's $1,000. So yeah, spending over $1,000 on a Titan X Pascal for the sake of all those extra goodies really isn't the best idea. In many gaming scenarios, we ended up finding that the GTX 1660 Super and GTX 1080 Ti are times far superior than the Titan X. And with the pricing of many 2000 and 3000 series Nvidia gaming cards being half the price with double the speeds, it's really a much better option to save a few hundred bucks and wait for a good deal to get one of these other cards. Again, don't always believe NVIDIA's statements about this graphics card. The AMD 5450. Despite that the AMD HD 5450 is by far one of the most energy efficient graphics cards available, you shouldn't expect it to actually perform well. In fact, it's not even all that great in performance and doesn't make it even good for gaming or streaming HD videos. The HD 5450's poor performance is due to the old 1 gigabyte of GDDR3 video memory, low blaze clock speed, and other factors. Most people prefer to buy this card because it is less expensive and could be used for plays and integrated chipset. However, if you have bigger hopes for this graphics card, you are sorely mistaken. It is definitely not the type of GPU that would allow you to play games at 1080p or even watch Netflix in 4K quality. The performance of this GPU is superior to that of Intel's previous integrated chipsets. However, while comparing this GPU against Intel's UHD graphics series, we discovered that the UHD is better at handling GPU intensive workloads than the HD 5450. In fact, you can acquire a much better performing graphics card by spending a little extra money on the NVIDIA GT 1030 or GTX 1050 Ti. The AMD R9 285. Next on the list is another graphics card from AMD. Although AMD's current generation cards are slightly superior to that of NVIDIA's, it does appear that the red team didn't put enough power into their R9 series GPUs to be able to defeat the green team. Despite the fact that the graphics card is now about 8 years old, many people still choose it because of the low price. The R9 285 was powerful enough to play popular games at the time, but its 2GB of VRAM is still problematic if you decide to buy it in 2022. Because of the lesser VRAM, you can only play most games at 720 resolution. However, the NVIDIA RTX 970, which was released in that same year and month as the R9 285, delivers 20% higher performance than the R9 285. Now, if you are a hardcore gamer, this isn't going to be the card for you at all. However, if you need it as a graphics card to be able to edit images and watch movies in greater definition, then by all means, go for it. However, if you do end up finding a good fit or a good deal on eBay and Amazon, we don't think that it's the right card for your PC. The NVIDIA GeForce 210. We all know that comparing earlier GeForce series cards to NVIDIA's latest next-gen entry-level GPUs is basically pointless. However, most people are drawn to the lesser 
price which NVIDIA GeForce 210 provides. Now listen, we're not going to be comparing this card to the latest generation of entry-level GPUs due to the fact that it's not even close. However, it is worth noting that this GPU's performance is poor compared to the newer games and graphic apps. The majority of the folks who end up choosing this lower-end card end up playing things like CSGO or Pug, and just because you're looking for a cheaper card doesn't exactly mean that it can play Pug, Fortnite, or CSGO. Obviously, the decreased performance could be attributed to the GPU's 1GB of DDR3 memory and insufficient base clock speed. However, matching it with the current generation GPU could be the most crucial factor. Whenever an obsolete graphics card is used with a current generation GPU, performance can suffer. And if you're thinking about buying this card to play FPS games, think twice, because you won't get anything above 20 frames per second, even with the lowest graphical settings. So that's the market's worst GPUs. Now let's take a look at what the best ones are out there. The RTX 3080. NVIDIA's latest Amphere architecture is used in the GeForce RTX 3080. It's around 30% faster than the previous generation 2080 Ti, while costing $500 or less. And if you want to play in 4K or 1440p, you definitely need this card. DLSS support might help performance if you are playing the latest ray tracing games. And if you missed out on the first set of RTX GPUs, then the RTX 30 series might be another option for ray tracing. With potentially twice the ray tracing performance of the Turing, and titles like Cyberpunk 2077 utilizing even more ray tracing effects than the previous RTX 3080, then it is your best bet for enjoying ray tracing games without destroying your bank account. Infer also helps to improve on the DLSS tensor cores, a technology that is going to be seen in more and more future games, given that it doesn't require per game supercomputing training. And because it's only a toggle and UI update in Unreal Engine and Unity to get DLSS 2.0 working, we're seeing a lot more games use it these days. NVIDIA's RT and DLSS performance has also been seen to outperform AMD's new RX 6000 cards, which is beneficial considering that NVIDIA sometimes does fall behind in traditional ray tracing. Radeon RX 6800 XT graphics card. AMD's Radeon RX 6800 XT is Team Red's best GPU. And despite being 5 to 7% faster, the RX Radeon 6900 XT is theoretically 54% more expensive. Now, that's not a great deal, don't get me wrong, especially when you don't really have any extra VRAM or other benefits. The RX 6800 XT slightly outperforms the RX 5700 XT, at least in terms of performance and capabilities. Before the release, the enthusiastic community had dubbed the Navi 21 GPU Big Navi, and we got precisely what we had expected. It's twice as big as the preceding Navi 10, with twice as many shader cores and double as much RAM. With this card, you're going to end up getting increased clock rates for 2.1 to 2.3 gigahertz, depending on the card model, and the highest clock speeds we've seen from reference GPUs are around 300 megahertz. Plus, AMD had accomplished it without significantly raising power consumption. In fact, the RX 6800 XT's TBP is only 300 watts, somewhat less than the RTX 3080's 320 watts. The massive 128 megabyte Infinity Cache even accounts for a substantial percentage of AMD's performance. It increases effective bandwidth by 119%, according to AMD. We even predict that there's a few titles that are requiring more than 16 gigabytes in the coming years, putting the 6800 XT in a whole new position. The RTX 3090 Ti. For some folks, regardless of the price, the fastest card is the best. NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3090 Ti caters to this such specific group. At approximately double the official price of the RTX 3080, performance is only slightly improved. We're talking 20 to 30 percent here in most workloads. It's also only around 5 to 10 percent faster and costs significantly more than the previous RTX 3090. However, internet pricing suggests that the 3090 Ti will only cost a few hundred dollars more than the 3090. There's also no need for a new Titan card because it already is a complete GA102 chipset with 84 SMs. The 3090 Ti, according to NVIDIA, gives the GeForce brand Titan class performance and even features, particularly the 24GB VRAM, if you need faster graphics cards, then the RTX 3090 Ti would be perfect for you. 
And it's not just about games though. NVLink on the RTX 3090 Ti is arguably way better than SLI whenever it comes to professional programs and GPU processing. The 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory could also be used for a variety of content creation tasks. Blender, for example, routinely outperformed the 3080 by 35 percent and the Titan RTX by over 100. This Titan RTX's drivers contain extra features that GeForce cards don't. So there you have it. Those are the best and worst GPUs right now. Thanks for watching today's video, and if you enjoyed it, we encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, folks, stay safe and stay informed.